YouTube and YouTubeettes, welcome to an album review. I have a very special formula that I use to make grades, so you will hear fractions and <laughs> like a 5.73 or whatever. I'm, I won't give that away, but in this video, I would like to review the Polyphonic Spree album, The Beginning Stages Of. This was released in May 2nd, 2002. There was a couple of other re-releases, or one that was officially in UK and produced by the Polyphonic Spree on the level on the label Hollywood slash Good Records. Uh, Good Records is the local record company in Dallas where the Polyphonic Spree is from. The founding members of the Polyphonic Spree are original members of Tripping Daisy, which was a 90s alternative band that ended when one of the members, Wes Bergen, died. And I had I was familiar with the name Tripping Daisy, but I wasn't too familiar with them. I first saw the Polyphonic Spree open up for Granddaddy around 2003 at Lakewood Theater in Dallas. And I was there to see Granddaddy. I'd never heard of the Polyphonic Spree, and I was blown away by the Polyphonic Spree. They were my favorite show of the night. And I wasn't even too familiar with Granddaddy. I just had friends and brothers that were into that, and I wasn't quite into them as much as I would get later. The original trumpeter started going to my church shortly after this, and... I asked him, what do you do for a living? He says, I play for the Polyphonic Spree. I'm like, no way. So uh, I was, he went to our church for over 10 years, and he's, he was, uh, he's a good friend. I don't see him much anymore. Uh, they left uh, a couple years ago. But the band, uh, I don't know what it is now, if it even is together right now, but um, early on it had approximately 25 members a band, an orchestra, and a choir. They all wore white robes, and it's just a fantastic show and visual and very fun. The cover of the album, uh, there's three, re re uh, three releases, and uh, I'll just touch on each of them. The original U.S. has an abstract painting, which I, I like the painting, but I'm, I'm not a big, huge fan of it for a cover, but I give it an 8 out of 10 for that one. The UK release is my favorite. It's just a photo of the group in their white robes, and I give that one a 9 out of 10. And the 2004 re-release is light blue to pink with filtered impression of the group, and that's my least favorite. I give a 6 out of 10. But I'm going to use the UK cover since it's my favorite, so I'll just say a 9 out of 10 for the cover. Now on to the songs. The first song is Section 1, or also known as Have a Day Celebratory. And this is, uh, it kind of starts out kind of sad with a piano. And then it gets into this happy lyrics and it kind of makes sense in a way because this is after Wes Bergen died and it's a new journey for Tim DeLauder, uh, uh, the leader of the group. I should also mention that all these songs are credited to being written by Tim DeLauder. He's the lead singer and the leader. And this, it kind of starts out with, it's, it's pretty, it's, musically it's kind of a sad song but it's, it's saying to cheer up. And so visually that's kind of cool and it's, and it's, if you know the context of it, and it's a good start to the album. It's kind of long and it's repetitive. That's the only problem with it, but it's artistic. It's, it's got a hook and good lyrics, the few that it has, but I give this one an 8.6 out of 10. The next song is Section 2, or It's the Sun. 
and this one is a uh, musically more happy than the first. There's also, but there's this lyric in there that says, uh, "Take some time, get away. Suicide is a shame." And I feel like that this is kind of coming out of the '90s, where it was cool to be, you know, the alternative rock grunge uh, era, where there was a lot of artists that were depressed and angry, you know, that kind of a feeling. And this was kind of getting away from that. And so I don't know that this would have been cool in the 90s. This is some a, t a total departure. And that's what I like about it. It's, it's very trying to get out of depression into happiness. And this is one of my favorite songs on the album. And I give it a 9.4 out of 10. The next song is Section 3, or Days Like This Keep Me Warm. This is a beautiful piece, and this one, it once again, like most of the songs on this album sound like it's a feeling or a, a, it's unfinished songs, or if that makes sense, but it's a great feeling if that, and I don't know how to explain that, and it kind of works that way, but, but the title of the album, the beginning stages of it, kind of fits that idea where there's not really complete, complete songs, but it's it's good to listen to. It's still good music. This one is more peaceful. It is somewhat, you know, you could say it's kind of happy, but it's more like relaxing and peaceful. Like you're trying to get from having a lack of peace in your life to being peaceful and, and just relaxing and that's kind of the feeling of this one. I love this song. It's a little less catchy, so it, but it's a great artistic piece, good lyrics. I give it an 8.6 out of 10. The next track is section four, or La La, and this one is more upbeat, but it's kind of I wouldn't call it happy music, it's more like chaotic music, but determined. And I had to look at the lyrics because they're hard to understand, so I looked them up and it seems to be kind of a prep talk to working through the chaos and taking the advice to you, you know, to, to use the message of this song to make it through despite all the chaos to find happiness and peace. At least that's what I get out of it. Uh, this isn't one of my favorite songs, but it is a very powerful song, and I give it an 8.2 out of 10. The next song is Middle of the Day, or Section 5, and this one is kind of an eerie sound. Now, it could you could say that it's kind of depressing music, but I, I, lyrically it's not meant to be depressing. It's probably, I would give it more, say, more meditative and peaceful and spiritual or something. So that's why it's kind of eerie. That's kind of how I feel about it. And I think it's a beautiful melody and a beautiful song. Very artistic piece. Uh, it's less catchy than, than a lot of the songs, so that brings the score down a bit. But I give it an 8.4 out of 10. The next song is hang, uh, Section 6, or Hanging Around the Day, Part 1. This is a musical introduction to Hanging Around the Day, Part 2. It could all be one track, so I don't know why they decided to divide it up. But this one starts out with the eeriness coming out of middle of the day, so it, it fits in terms of the flow. But then it starts picking up with the trumpet, and it's got this happy music sound once again. This, there's no lyrics on this track, but I, I do like the music. And this one gets an 8.8 .8 out of 10. Next song is Hanging Around the Day Part 2, or Section 7, as it is was originally known. This one has happy music, sort of, 
but it's also kind of uh, looking at the lyrics. I was having a hard time really trying to figure out if it was happy or sad. I get the sense that it's more about determination through all the monotony of life and sometimes the failing. Uh, one of the lyrics says something about you're fooling yourself with blame and that's kind of an interesting lyric because I guess that means you kind of get frustrated at yourself at times but you're determined to move to the future to move on that's kind of what I get out of it if you have a different thought of what that lyric means let me know I've never dug as deep into lyrics as I am on this album but I think it really there's a message here but I give this one a 9.2 out of 10. Great song. The next song is Section 8 or Soldier Girl. This is probably my favorite song on the album. I it's very catchy. It's kind of got that 90s alternative quirkiness to it, but it's a bit more on the happy side. And it's it's kind of nonsensical. It doesn't really it doesn't really say much more about this relationship or this girl. But, uh, but it's a very happy song. It's very repetitive. So it's got st a strong hook, I would say. And it's also got interesting production and, and artistic side of it, uh, as well as the uh, catchiness. But I give this one a 9.4 out of 10. The next track is section 9, or Light and Day Reach for the Sun. And this one is a little bit more relaxing, but it's also encouraging to, I guess you could say the sun represents happiness, daylight, as opposed to darkness. I almost feel like it's like the evening time, but it's saying to continue to reach for the sun <laughs> because it's towards the end of the album. Maybe kind of like the Beach Boys song, The Warmth of the Sun, where the sun is still there, even though it's dark, you're trying to keep the warmth of the sun. This is also probably the most popular song on the album. I think it's been on commercials and things. And it's a really catchy song. It's a it's a great song. I give it an 8.8 .8 out of 10. The final track is section 10 or a long day. And this one doesn't really go anywhere. It's very ambient, uh, kind of these just chords that just kind of go. I mean, these interesting sounds. 36 and a half minutes long and it doesn't really go anywhere. I sat through it all one time, I believe. I can't remember ever going through it again because I wanted to see if it, if it went anywhere and if there was anything interesting, and it really doesn't. But if you're in a weird mood, <laughs> you can sit through this. I gave it a one out of 10 in catchiness. So this one, it does hire a, well on the artistic side because it's so weird. So overall, this one gets a 4.7 out of 10. The album flow is a 10 out of 10, and it has kind of this theme as I went through the lyrics, but also with the music. So a 10 out of 10 for the flow. This album, as I was reviewing it, took me places I wasn't planning on going. But like I said earlier, this is kind of like coming out of the 90s where it was all about grunge and alternative and anger and depression, going into a new day, kind of this happiness uh, kind of thing, going, getting away from suicide, getting away from all that stuff. And that's kind of how I feel like that's the message of this album, and it's really good. I also want to say that this music is good on CD and on record, but it's much better to see them live. Unfortunately, I don't know. I mean, they get together every once in a while, but I don't know if they'll ever tour again. The problem with the Polyphonic Spree is it's not necessarily mainstream. I think it was doing okay. I mean, they got on late night talk shows and t television and 
they're pretty much they're known kind of around the world but they're not big enough to support 20 30 members in a group <laughs> with all the instruments that they have to take and all that stuff so commercially uh, business wise it doesn't work which is unfortunate but I love this group I've, I've met them I've seen them their Christmas shows that they would do in Dallas were awesome and I don't think you they did them anywhere else maybe they like in tours like in November and December they would do in other cities as well but uh, I went to several of those including a rehearsal for one but this is a great album so now I will pull out my handy dandy computer and calculate my formula. And this album gets an 8.59 out of 10. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you.